So Nilestat is a publicly traded uh, company in Egypt right now, communications company, uh, with annual turnover of over $200 million. You know, that's the success story. Uh, you know, we've got, you know, companies like New Space System, you know, developing uh, components that are being used all over the world. Uh, we've got Simera Science. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we have a lot of, you know, we recently released the New Space Africa uh, industry report for 2019, and I, I would encourage people to check that out. Uh, we were able to profile 34 private companies. Uh, in Africa that are actually operating in the space industry. And, you know, you can see a lot of success stories. All right, we're back with another episode of not the old star project, the cold star project. You see, I need to move slightly to the, uh, the right here. <laughs> I'm with Tebedeo Onyesun. He is the managing director at Space in Africa. So originally from Nigeria, he spent some time in the UK. And uh, his thing is news, data, and market analysis for the African space industry. And as you know, I love to get folks outside of the European and North American markets to come in and meet with us. Uh, he has been, this is kind of cool, 2018, he was noted as one of the world 24, under 24 leaders and innovators in space and STEAM by the Mars generation. He was one of the recipients of the 35 Under 35 Space Industry Recognition Award by the International Institute of Space Commerce and by Bella uh, Naira as one of the 25 under 25 Nigerians who are influencing and disrupting the world of entrepreneurship, leadership, governance, and the corporate world. So he is a cool guy to be on here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the invite. All right. So what brought you to the love of space? Oh, wow. So um, initially, I wanted to study astronauts because I was actually fascinated by space. It was beautiful, uh, you know, in Africa at night, you get to look at uh, the clear sky. Uh, you get to see all the stars and all. Mm. And growing up, sometimes we actually sleep outside. And then you get to see all these beautiful stars and all. And it was actually, the thought of actually studying that um, was interesting for me. So I, when I wanted to, um, enrolled into the university. I wanted to study astronomy, but unfortunately that kind of program was not available in Nigeria then. So I opted for meteorology. Um, so I graduated with a degree in uh, meteorology focusing on satellite meteorology in 2016. Uh, and during my studies I was actively involved in like a lot of you know space programs uh, across Africa and in other part of the world. And that was actually how my journey into the space industry started. Hmm. Okay. And then you decided to get into the news field. So tell me, what do you believe is the most exciting thing happening in the space industry in Africa right now? There's a lot going on. Well, uh, yes, there's a lot of things going on. The, the development is enormous right now. Uh, the African space industry is currently developing at a very fast rate. Uh, faster than ever and probably faster than uh, the, the rate that the industry is developing in other parts of the world. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, up to date, about uh, 40 satellites have been launched by African countries. And it is projected that in the next five years, more than 17 new satellites will be launched. Mm. So which means in the past 21 years, about 40 satellites was launched. And then in the next five years, more than 70 new satellites will be launched. So it shows how fast the industry is growing. Uh, more money is coming into the industry. A lot of new countries are trying to develop space program in Africa. Uh, there's a lot of research going on in astronomy. And there's a lot of commercial space companies also coming up. So all around, there's a lot of interesting things coming up. I, I could say, Everything about the industry currently is interesting. <laughs> okay. What are you personally interested in most in, in being involved with? Uh, well, for, for me personally, I, I really want to see uh, a lot of development in the commercial space ecosystem in Africa. Uh, because up to now, a lot of the growth has actually been driven by, uh, by government. 
most of the investments are being driven by the government and her. Uh, so personally, I want to see more commercial space companies have. Okay. Let's, I mean, we're going to have uh, listeners from outside Africa, obviously. Uh, one of the things that I first saw from you uh, on LinkedIn after we connected was a link to africanews.space, some reports, some investment reports on who is investing in space in Africa, and that was really impressive. Is there any specific expertise being developed in Africa for the space program? For example, I had a fellow on from Singapore who pointed out that ground systems were really good there. Um, what, what would you like people to know about space in Africa uh, who are outside that environment? Uh, well, talking about um, development of expertise, I, I would say how the value chain, like every segment of the value chain, uh, mm. this expertise has been developed in that. Uh, we now have like a lot of companies developing you know, satellite components, for example. We've got a lot of companies developing uh, ground station technologies. We've got a lot of companies that are they can actually, uh, you know, develop an entire nano satellite. We've mm -hmm. got a lot of companies doing uh, assembly and integration testing. Um, you know, we've got a lot of companies developing telescope, developing mm -hmm. um, receiving station for telescope, and all of that. So, um, and then we've got like a lot of companies that is into communication, satellite communication. So. Uh, expertise has actually been developed in every segment of the value chain um, and you know we we also have like a lot of uh, a lot of developments around space applications so it's not just the development of technology now we have a lot of startups for example that are using these space technologies to actually solve different development problems in Africa. Cool okay how well do you believe that African nations are working together to develop space capabilities or are they kind of jostling around <laughs> for influence and uh, pieces of the pie? Uh, well, Africa is a very large continent, mm -hmm. um, about 54 countries. So mm -hmm. um, ordinarily that is not, you know, uh, that is not like something that is easy to manage. But yeah, African countries are, They've been working together for um, for a while. Uh, I mean, you you should know of the African Space Agency, mm -hmm. um, and there's like a lot of other projects, other programs uh, in different uh, segment of the industry where countries are actually coming together uh, to to develop stuff or maybe use space resources uh, to solve various challenges. So, I mean, we might not be where we want to be, you know, because of a lot of uh, challenges in Africa that is actually outside of the space industry. Uh, mm. You know, talking about the African Free Trade Agreement, for example. Uh, but, you know, in, in the very near future, I think there will be more cooperation between uh, African countries, especially with, uh, with new initiatives like the African Free Trade uh, Agreement, for example. So we'll get uh, to see more African countries actually working together um, to develop stuff, working together, exchanging resources and all of that. Okay. And how are foreign companies uh, getting involved with, with African countries and their capabilities? Like what, what is, is there like a point of entry or, you know, somebody that they should connect with first, like the African Space Agency? What would you recommend? Uh, okay, so um, yeah, we, we've had a lot of foreign companies uh, you know, operating in the African space industry. The industry is currently worth over seven billion dollars. Mm. So you know that's a lot of money, and everybody want to get a chunk of that. So yes, we've had, uh, and we currently have like a lot of foreign. I used to tell people that if you're doing a space business and you're not thinking about Africa, then you really need to strategize mm. because Africa is the land of opportunity. It's where uh, no matter where you are, you're in Europe, you're in America, you're in Asia, uh, you know, and operating in the industry, you got to work with Africa. It's, it's very important. It's, it's, it's a lot of money involved. And, uh, you know, there's this saying that Africa is the future. So uh, I think any, any company uh, that is operating in the industry and is actually not thinking about Africa, 
maybe for the technology or looking at working with African countries to develop technology. Uh, I think such companies, uh, you know, need to ensure. You can't afford to be second best. You need to be first, and that requires speed. Now, if you're thinking that growth is supposed to be slow and steady, frankly, the way I was taught back in the 90s in the operations management and business administration programs, you are too slow. We have to adapt. And in space, it's no different than anywhere else. People like to think they're special in space, and it is fun, all the stuff we get to work on, but business is business. The fundamentals nowadays are conservative growth is not good. You need to run as fast as you can and risk outstripping your supply lines, which means in our world, using up the capital that we've got. That's a risk. But there is no prize for second place. There certainly is no prize for third. If you want to scale operationally fast, come talk to us at Cold Star Tech. We are the process experts for scaling fast. Now back to the interview. Obviously, there's a lot of near equatorial land for good for launch sites, maybe, in the African continent. How, are, how is the knowledge base of the workers getting developed? Do people go abroad and come back, or are there schools at home where they're learning? How does that turn out? Um, well, it's, it's the combination of both. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, I mean, in the past, several years, it was very challenging. You know, I told my story how it was difficult for me to study and especially the cost uh, in Nigeria, for mm. example. So uh, in the past several years, it was very challenging to study any space-related program in Africa. Uh, but, you know, recently, we've seen the establishment of a couple of institutions in different parts of Africa, uh, you know, that are offering space-related programs in engineering, uh, in astronomy, even in space law. Uh, so it's a mix of the two. I mean, a lot of people still go abroad to study uh, and come back to, you know, make use of the knowledge to develop a space program in Africa, you know, while others are actually uh, studying some of this program in Africa. Uh, and for example, one of the things African Union is working on is the Pan African University on Space Science and Technology, which, uh, you know, we hope will start operation next year. Okay. What, what are one or two African space company success stories that, that come to mind? Uh, well, we, I mean, we, we have Nilesat, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so Nilesat is a publicly traded uh, company in Egypt right now, communications company, uh, with annual turnover of over $200 million. You know, that's a success story. Uh, you know, we've got, you know, companies like New Space System, you know, developing uh, components that are being used all over the world. Uh, we've got Simera Science. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we have a lot of, you know, we recently released the New Space Africa uh, industry report for 2019, and I, I would encourage people to check that out. Uh, we were able to profile 34 private companies. Uh, in Africa that are actually operating in the space industry. And, you know, you can see a lot of success stories. On this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any gap in the, in the knowledge base that is most needed to be filled or is it, is it pretty even? Like you've got ground station and launch maybe site capabilities, some satellite manufacturing, right? Um, launch vehicles is probably still outside. I, I would imagine, but uh, you know, what other areas are there? Well, uh, I, I think uh, I think to an extent we we have we have the knowledge base. The, the mm. problem sometimes is the infrastructure. Mm. Uh, so it's like, yeah, we've got people that are building rocket systems, for example, but we don't have a lot of countries that are interested in developing rocket systems. So you see, that's the problem. So uh, at some point, it's no longer about, oh, do we have expertise in this area? We've got people that can develop every uh, different kind of satellite, for example. But So it's not a question of you know, countries saying, you know what, I want to develop infrastructure in my country. 
uh, I want to set up laboratory. I want to set up all of this in my country so that you can actually develop all of it. So it's a problem of, you know, infrastructure now. And also, uh, I think one of the problems so is the fact that uh, the expertise are like in some countries, uh, you know, while we don't have the expertise in other countries. So th there are countries that have been in the space, uh, in the space, in space game for like several years now, like, uh, you know, we've got Nigeria, South Africa, Algeria, Egypt, you know, these countries have been able to develop, you know, expertise in technology development right now. Uh, while we have very new entrants in the, in the industry, you know, new countries that are coming up to develop the space program. So some of them do not have these capabilities and, you know, this is what they're trying to develop. And, um, and this, I think, uh, this is a problem that I think, uh, like a program uh, such as the Pan-African University on Space Science and Technology would be able to solve, uh, you know, using the resources we have in Africa to actually train Africans in technology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any organizations doing that kind of outreach or talking in the community and trying to get people involved in space? Or is it like, are they waiting around for government to do something or private companies to come in and, and do something? Well, yeah, we, yes, there, there are, you know, there are organizations and, uh, you know, not just African based organizations, even like, you know, global organizations mm -hmm. that are involved like space outreach uh, in Africa. Uh, for example, we've got like the Space Generation Advisory Council, which is like uh, the community of students and young professionals you know, who are actively advocating for, um, you know, for the for, for space program in different, uh, different countries in Africa. Uh, but, you know, like I said, uh, African space program is still majorly driven by the, the government. So, mm -hmm. It's still more of you know getting the government to actually see a need to invest in some of this mm. technology. Okay, very cool. Hey, this is Jason Canigan, the host of the Cold Star Project and the founder of Cold Star Technologies. I've decided to do something new. I've started doing daily update videos on who I met and what I learned the previous day in the space field. And it's a great sort of follow me thing. You can learn what I learn. I'm meeting a heck of a lot of people and learning a lot of things really fast. And the space field is really disparate. There are tons of nooks and crannies to go into and explore from legal, operational, you know, regulatory compliance and gosh the end customer <laughs> who would have thought about that right so you can sign up for this if you go to coldstartech.com slash msb that's short for make space boring the mission we're on then you can sign up and in your email you will get a daily notification that the new video has been posted I'm also thinking about doing some branded mini courses and summarizing papers as uh, I'm able to. So those will be some goodies that are in there as well. So if you're interested in that, go to coldstartech.com slash MSB and join us on the mission to make space boring. Now back to the interview. So you're, you're a business, you prepare, you gather data on space and prepare reports. Um, and, and so this is called Space in Africa. Who is the best consumer or customer reader of, of those reports? Who's your ideal reader? Uh, well, it, most of our readers are actually outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of people outside of Africa want to know what's going on in Africa. Mm -hmm. This is like uh, our major uh, customer base. Um, a lot of our reports are being uh, have been accessed from Europe, Asia, and America. Okay, and and it's an executive level, I would imagine. Yes, uh, you know, definitely, we 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 have. Uh, I mean, a lot of the big players are, are some of our clients. Um, hmm. You know, like I said, the the industry is developing at a very fast rate, so it's very important for. Uh, commercial players globally to position themselves uh, in such a way that you know they can actually capture the market. Uh, and you know, our job is to provide information about the industry through you know market research, through analysis, and all. We've got uh, staff physically in like five African countries, 
Mm. So, uh, you know, we actively work with all the industry players uh, to get a deeper understanding of what is going on in the industry. And um, to a very good extent, our analysis uh, is working well in actually shaping the industry. Uh, and, you know, in the past one year, for example, we've seen like uh, incredible growth in the industry and uh, it is projected that in the next few years, um, you know, it will be way bigger than what it is right now. Okay. And where can people go who are interested in finding out more about uh, Space in Africa reports? Yes, uh, our website is uh, www.spaceinafrica.com. Uh, Makes sense. So we've got... <laughs> Yes, we've got lots of reports uh, for different segments of the industry. We've got, in, uh, you know, general industry reports. We talks about, you know, how much each country is spending on space program, uh, you know, where the revenue is coming from, how much revenue the industry is generating by segment. You know, every year it talks about the policy for uh, each of the countries, how each African country is actually thinking, you know, the way they're actually structuring and developing the space program you know, information about every satellite project in Africa, uh, and, you know, not just past satellites that have been launched, even ongoing projects and future satellites, you know, in the next five years, what African countries are going to develop in the next five years. Uh, so we've got all of these resources available on our website uh, for a different range of uh, audience. Okay. Is there a conference in Africa for space that you're like, man, this is the one you have to go to? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, there are different conferences mm -hmm. for, uh, for different segments of the industry. Earlier this month, there was mm -hmm. the African Space Leadership Conference, um, you know, which is the conference where uh, most of the uh, government players, you know, come together with the African Union, you know, to deliberate on, you know, what is going on in the industry. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe I should use this medium to announce that we're planning a conference uh for next year mm -hmm. um you know by the new year we'll have more details on this uh but we're planning the conference next year bringing together all the active industry player um you know the commercial arm of the industry the government arm of the industry uh the space agencies investors and all the foreign players you know um to to explore business opportunities in the industry and in deliberate on the issues that we're actually going into Okay. We're recording this in early December. By the time it comes out, it will probably be January or early February. So if you give me the information uh, on your conference when you've got it available, I'll make sure that it comes out in the show notes. So if people are watching on YouTube, they can look in the description. If you're listening on uh, audio, same thing. <laughs> It'll be down in the yeah. description below. Okay, very cool, very cool. So you are traveling around and meeting people, and that, just to wrap up, are there one or two people who have particularly impressed you in the space industry in Africa, who are like, hey man, you should know these guys? Uh, you mean in the space industry in Africa? Yes, yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a very tough <laughs> question. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I've met a lot of people, and you know, everyone in the industry is wonderful. Uh, you know, it's not just Africa, it's the global space industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's oftentimes it feels like a whole family of mm -hmm. you know, Everyone is amazing. Everyone is, you know, awesome. And also, yeah, I've met a lot of people and uh, a lot of them, you know, most of these people are awesome. And it would be very difficult for me to <laughs> to single out anyone. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but I would say this is a very exciting industry. This is uh, this is an interesting industry. Everyone is is awesome. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm experiencing the same thing as well. It is it is a very friendly place, much more yeah, so yeah. than uh, maybe more traditional manufacturing that uh, that I've worked yeah, in before. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, my guest today has been Tamadeo. Anyasun, he is the Managing Director at Space in Africa, and I would recommend that you either connect with him on LinkedIn or go check out his website. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. 